Hey guys, Case with Top Ranch here. Today uh, we're taking down this pretty good sized red maple. This tree is not looking so hot, so with closer inspection, a long time ago this tree ended up uh, getting scuffed by a piece of machinery or a plow or something like that. And so this has been a wound for quite some time. You can see we have a little bit what they call frass, which is actually just basically insect shit. <laughs> that is, there's a whole bunch of boars that have been slowly eating this tree. Um, if we look really closely, there's a whole bunch of little small brown ants. They're actually moving their eggs up everywhere. This black line um, is actual fungal spores. So when when it rains, the tree rain ends up getting into the into the tree, uh, basically the center of the tree, and it, there's some fungi in there that are starting to do their thing, and all the black portion of that is your tannins that are coming out plus uh, there's a whole bunch of fungal spores that are probably inside of that as well so when you see these like black lines in trees that's not good um, and then we come over to the other side as well we're starting to actually have that same kind of similar black on this side here you can see there's lots of water that's right here so that means that the inside of this tree is not good at all we're taking this tree down we're just going to end up felling it on his lawn over here so that way he can do his addition without having to uh, take this guy down after basically. This got quite a bit of back lean and a little bit of side lean. I'm gonna put a triple hinge on this side over here just so that way as it goes, the, if, if one of the hinges breaks, it doesn't wanna go right at his little barn over there. Regular plain Jane face cut. It's got quite a bit of back lean, so we're gonna have to really wedge it over. And if we have to, we can take the mini off of the uh, trailer and give it a little bit of a shove, but she should work just fine anyway. So. Let's uh, show you how we're going to do it. So when you have a lot of holes and a lot of defects towards the butt of the tree, I'm actually going to uh, going to cut higher up so that way we get out of these the vicinity of these ones because the closer that these defects are to either my holding wood or where I'm going to be using my wedges, um, it makes it so that way if they're on the back side, I have less places I can place a wedge. If they're on the front side, there's going to be less uh, good structural wood sometimes where I'm going to be putting my hinge fibers so that way that we can control the tree as it comes down. So that's why I'm going to cut it up kind of high-ish anyway so that way I get away from any of these defects and then I have some good sound wood especially on this back side over there where it will be holding the tree as the whole entire thing falls basically. So let's uh, see if we can make it happen. If you look, this is my face cut. This nice white wood is all my good sap wood, nice and solid. But as soon as we come in here, we're starting to have these black lines. A lot of times those black lines will actually mean where there's a boundary of a fungal colony. So the inside wood of this tree is a little unstructural. It's starting to be compromised by all the bacteria and the fungi and the stuff in there. It's trying to break it down and turn it back into soil. So probably the farther I go in there, the more rot I'm going to have. So I'm going to actually put an extra, uh, an extra bore on the back side of it. So I'll have three hinges basically on this back side. It also will make it so it's harder for me to push it over with some wedges. So I'm just going to come over on this side. I'm going to come in about a third of, third of the way. So I'm going to bore in about a third of the way three times. And then, uh, and then this, this side over here, I'm just going to, uh, it's just going to be a single hinge on this side. But. You'll see what all that looks like when the tree falls down where it's supposed to go. So this is how I'm going to measure the depth at which I'm going to go in when I do my triple hinge on this side. I usually pull my bar up like this and now I say, well, how far do I want to go in? I want to go in right about here. So I'm going to basically go into the eye. So when, when I'm boring into it, when my eye gets into the where the bark is, then I'm good. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin around this side. So when I bore into this side, I know I have to stop at the L here which makes it so that way I have the right amount of hinge wood that I leave here, plus the right amount of wood that I leave on this side to make it so that way I have extra strength in this uphill side. So that way, it, as it bends and as it goes down, I don't want it to break and then, and then, uh, and then go towards the, the barn he has over here. <laughs> You 
you can vary the width of each of these hinges and I'm actually gonna keep them all about the same uh, so they're about an inch every single time because the rule of thumb is you want about 10% of the whole entire diameter of the tree is usually how of a big of a hinge wood you're gonna leave and so I'll have basically three inches of hinge on this side and then an inch on the other side and that should be plenty to keep this tree to go right over. So now I can tell what how deep I have gone. So when I come back over here, I'm gonna wind it right up. And I know I'm right about, that's how far these hinges have gone in there. So now I'm gonna come over to this side here. And I know I'm gonna have, I'm gonna, I'm gonna usually bore this way where I'm, uh, my attack side is away from the hinge so that way it doesn't kind of creep towards my hinge. And I need, I know that I have to have it so that they right about here, I'm going in right before the L basically leave about an inch or so go go to the L come in so that I have my desired uh, hinge width flip my saw over and I'm gonna put my wedges in as I walk around basically I'm gonna have this uh, part of my chain right here. I'm gonna use that as a guide for how parallel my uh, my hinges. So this side right here, I want the 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 inside of it to be parallel to that. Right now, I have a little bit of a kind of a Y going to there, so I got to bring my tip in just a little bit more, and then and you can probably see from the film as I pushed my bar my the bar into it, it kind of went a lot easier. So that means the wood in the inside is really basically not doing much for the tree it's all the wood on the outside so if I'm a little bit big on my hinge it's totally okay because the center uh, the center of wood is not really doing too much so the sides it's okay for them to be just a little bigger to make up for that missing fiber basically <laughs> are not necessarily lined up which is totally okay as long as they kind of bypass that's all that matters because the same I'll have to show you this type of cut but that's basically a, a, a step cut where you come in one side go over and go past it so that way I can break it off and throw it down um, this is the same kind of thing the only bad part about doing this is I can't use this area for uh, putting a wedge in just because my wedge won't fit very well but I have really punky wood so that's why I left that in the middle more wedges is always better here so because then that way I don't have to really pound them as much individually so they all kind of work together because when you're really hammering on these guys they have a tendency to break so I'm going to want to end up doubling this one up so I'm not going to really pound this one too much because I'm going to add a, a second one to this one so I get more lift and when you hear that kind of ring that we have that one's tight sawdust throw it between them and on another video we, we ground we shave this part down so that way when they're touching we don't have this big flare because if you look at this there's a pretty good size flare that's right here when these two what happens is you can see it holds it up and there's a space but when you end up cutting that off 
I have much more surface area and all my sawdust in there will keep these two wedges from popping right out. So once in a while you have to have to clean them up when you're pounding them really hard because a lot of times you end up hitting the edge or you get tired from swinging just because you, you're, uh, you're working. see what we did so when you look here lots of fiber pole this is what we want so this actually helps keep the tree from going 90 degrees from where this cut is happening and when you look here when you come back over here you can see that all that that discolored uh, wood ended up breaking very very nicely nice and basically square and then as soon as you got into the sap wood here we ended up having quite a bit of uh, fiber pole on these ones so that means that the, the, the stuff in the middle was kind of compromised, so it broke really easily. It didn't really, the fibers, uh, they broke versus pulling themselves out of each other. So that means the, that these ones weren't really holding the tree up very well, at least not aiding too much of our strength of our hinge here. Which is why I ended up making three triple hinges on this side, because when I cut into it, you could see all this discoloration. And it's always better to have a little bit bigger of a hinge when you have a situation like this because you can always cut more. You can't put it back, especially as the tree is falling. Um, but this was a totally, uh, totally super predictable tree when we started taking our time and looking at all the different signs. And so, as long as you guys go through, make sure you make sure you look at every single part of the tree to assess what's going to happen next, and um, they're all going to end up like this for you. So. Just keep on, keep on being cautious, use the information wisely, and uh, you guys can do it just as easy as I can. No problem at all. That's a wrap.